Okay, so there was a, um, someone said, hey, let's do more videos, um, so I can make another video. This is for the calculation of the acceleration for falling object. So let's just say that we have a ball and we release it from rest, so uh, V1 equals zero meters per second, and it drops. So it starts, it ends up at uh, some at, at y2 equals zero, y1 equals h. And we want to find the acceleration. Well, um, I'm just gonna jump to the kinematic equation, but there's a not too terrible de derivation of the kinematic one of the kinematic equations. And it says that if you know the starting time, the starting velocity, the starting position, and the acceleration, you can find uh, the final position. And so it looks like this. It would say the final position is the initial position plus the initial velocity times the time it takes to fall plus one half the acceleration times time squared. That's the kinematic equation. Okay. So if I take a ball and drop it, I can, I, and I drop it from rest, I know that term is zero. I can measure the initial and final positions, and if I know the time, I can calculate the acceleration. That's really what we're going to do. But we're not going to do it quite like that. So the situation that we use is it's called a drop timer. And it, if you drop a ball and use a stopwatch, it takes under a second. The uncertainty in your starting and stopping is just giant. And so you don't get a very good value. So this drop timer automatically starts the timer when it leaves up here and automatically stops when it gets down to here. But you need to measure this distance right here. And it's actually the distance from the bottom of the ball to the top of the timer, because that's where it's, that's how far it falls. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to uh, measure, pick some different heights, I'll call these uh, this H, and record the time. So you get, let's say, a height of 0.5 meters, a height of 0.75 meters, that's a double point, a height of 1.0, 1.2, 1.3, and so forth, let's say 1.4. And then for the time, well, I can, I'm gonna still get an uncertainty in the time. I'm gonna have an uncertainty in the height too, because I'm measuring this with a meter stick. So I may say uh, 0.5 plus or minus 0 0.0 plus or minus 0 0.0, uh, that's meters, so 0 0.005, maybe, you pick, you get to pick that. For the uncertainty in the time, um, I could repeat this. I could do this five times. I'm just going to make up some values that may be completely unrealistic here. So you get 0 0.233, 0 0.238, 0 0.229, 0.231, and, and one more. 0 0.234. Those are my four times seconds. That's five second times. But then I can find the average and the standard deviation, and that will be my t. And then I can do it for a height of 0.75, one blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's the data you're gonna collect, the first part. But how do you find the acceleration? Well, let's call my initial height h and my final height zero, and my initial velocity zero. This equation then becomes zero equals h that's zero, plus one half a t squared. So I can get height as a function of time, and I can write that as h equals negative one half a t squared, where a is the acceleration, and it would be a negative value. Okay, that's why h is positive. So these are my two variables, h and t. So there's two things I could do. I'm gonna erase this, but you can rewind it because you've got the video. Here's the first thing I can do. I can take, now, in a lab, normally, we put the independent variable this way. An independent variable would be the thing that you change, um, and then you measure what happens. So in this case, I'm actually changing the height. But maybe I don't want to, maybe I don't want to put h along there just for mathematical reasons. I'm okay with that. 
Some other people in chemistry, they may say, well, you can never do that, okay? But they should just chill. So I'm gonna chill. So I'm gonna plot T, let's see, wait. Now I'm changing, I can, put, I can do whatever I want. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, let's say I plot Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do, uh, what if I plot T versus H? Then this should look like, uh, as I increase the time, which I'm really measuring, I should get much larger H's, so it should look like, well, this, if I, this, this actually would look the other way because there's a negative sign. But the point is, it should look like a parabola. And so if I get data like this, I can, Use, if I use a computer program, I can fit y equals ax squared plus b if you want uh, to the data. And where a isn't the acceleration, a is a coefficient in front of the x squared term, in front of the t squared, which I'm calling t, t here. And so whatever term this would be would be one half the acceleration. So the acceleration would be twice that value, whatever it gives you. And so I have some tutorials on making a graph and finding this. Okay, but that's one way to find the acceleration. But the problem is it re requires you to have a computer. What, what if you don't want to use a computer? Which is what you should be able to do on a test. I'm not going to have you use a computer. So I want to make the only thing I can graph and find a function is a line. So what would I graph that would make this a line? What if I plot h versus t squared? So if I do that... Here's, I'd have to calculate t squared, h, t squared, then that should be a straight line. And the slope of that line, you can find, you can do rise and run, m equals the slope, and that would be the slope, actually this would be going down. No. No, well, g is, a is negative, yeah, so it's okay. And so here, if I plot this variable versus that variable, then one half a is a slope. So this is going to be one half the acceleration. So the acceleration would be two times the slope. So that way you can do it without having to use a computer. And you can use normal graph paper. Okay, there you go.